Hello genealogists, it's Craig and this is Just Genealogy and I've been chastised four times in the last three weeks for not being happy enough for you all, believe it or not. Uh, I'm a happy person on the inside, I'm a pretty sad person on the outside, not really, I'm just don't. I need to figure out a way to come across happier so that you know that this is not a drudgery for me, that this is something that I really want to do and that I actually love doing it. And that maybe if I appear to be sad, it's probably only because I'm always so tired. But anyway, being tired is a thing for me, I guess now, post COVID. What I do every day though, and probably it helps to make me tired, is I walk about 10,000 steps. So as I'm pulling Heritage Books orders, I say I have 10 or 15 of them. I will walk around the warehouse with nothing in my hand. Then I'll walk around the warehouse with the order in my hand and then I'll walk around the warehouse and pick the order and then I'll walk around the warehouse with the order in hand if it's a light order one book two books and then I'll put it down and walk around the warehouse with nothing in my hand it sounds almost musical doesn't it and generally by the time that the warehouseman shows up in the warehouse it's which is at about 9 30 all the books are pulled and the mailing labels are all done and the major work that has to be done for the day, other than answering the phone and taking care of orders that come in during the day, is to uh, recognize that I have met my 40 minutes of exercise and have walked 5,000 steps, so I have 5,000 more steps to walk because I like to do 10,000 a day because I'm down 30 pounds now. I guess 257 I, I can't tell the math 27 pounds I guess it is 257 down to 229 230 and my goal is to get to 185 so I can do this in my kilts 185 so I can do this in my kilts okay or at least wear utility kilts all day long it doesn't matter I mean nothing will put off court clerks more than anything else is somebody showing up at their courthouse wearing a utility kilt imagine that I don't think I'll be able to accomplish that, but what fun that will be. So the reason I'm talking about this is because if you walk 5,000 steps or two and a half miles before nine o'clock in the morning and you have all that empty time in regards to you don't have a book in your hand, you don't have an order in your hand, and you don't have to think about it when you have the book in your hand, but you don't have the order in your hand and you're not pulling the book. I mean, generally, the only thing I have to remember is to carry my glasses with me and uh, carry some sort of light so I can see in the warehouse at that hour in the morning. So I have a lot of time to think about what should I do with just genealogy now? And one of the things I thought about was one of the one of my favorite things to do is to figure out how I relate to other people. So because of DNA and ancestry and Family Tree DNA and My Heritage and 23andMe, which I have DNA in all of those places, or I have family DNA in all of those places. Uh, my parents are at Family Tree DNA, and my siblings and I are at Ancestry, and then I have my stuff at My Heritage and uh, 23andMe, I have my stuff there too. So one of the joys I have in life is being able to connect me to people that have done their DNA, but they haven't done their trees. So if, if they've done a tree and we connect, that's, that's okay, that's easy, that's fun, that's, but not, not the pleasure of finding somebody who is your third cousin or fourth cousin that has no tree and then you set out to figure out how you actually relate. And that for me is fun. And if I'm not, if I don't have anything to do, a rare occasion by the way, if I don't have anything to do or I need to relax, that's how I relax is try to figure out how these third and fourth cousins relate to me. Kind of difficult to do with fifth and sixth, but you know, once I got, I only have one third cousin I haven't figured out yet. And I just got uh, an ancestry email from someone who a year ago or so, maybe longer than I went to and said, hey, I think you're X. And then a week later I went, wait, you're not X, you're Y. And I don't mean X and Y in the 
regards to chromosomes, I mean X and Y, and uh, what their relationship to me was. And I really couldn't figure out why they actually were bi, but I had a sense that they were this, but it just, it, the chromosome, the um, centimorgans didn't quite match up right properly. And here I had this, this uh, actually two generations where I had her and I had her daughter, and it just wasn't matching up right. It seemed like it was a generation off. Well, it turns out, she sent me an email this past week um, that said, my mother got the test, but she gave me, for herself, but she gave me the test, so I took the test, and it was under her name. And that, of course, made it all come together, and that also meant that everything that I thought was true in the second go-around was, in fact, true and confirmed. I knew the daughter, I knew her. It, it was just so much fun. It was so pleasing to have that finally happen because it's actually been on my mind for a while. Like, I don't understand, why, do, why doesn't this work? I know how center organs work, you know, it's not working. So, but it was a generation off and that's why it wasn't working. But before DNA, in order to relax, what I would do is I would try to figure out how I related to other people that were famous. Because before DNA, that was what was fun. You know, how, how all of the presidents, with the exception of one, I think Van Buren, although it might be Buchanan, but I think it's actually Van Buren, relate to each other somehow, I have heard. I haven't seen that. I haven't looked at that. I haven't verified that, but I have heard that, that only one president doesn't relate to all the other presidents. Well, over the years, I found many presidents that were my cousins. In you know, I mean, we're not talking close. We're not talking anything that means anything, but we're talking being able to take a known genealogy, theirs, and then trying to fit my genealogy into theirs so that I would know who my eighth cousin twice removed was or my 11th cousin two times removed was. Now, I really started doing this because of my grandfather. My grandfather was a Woodson. His name was William Woody Roberts. And I always thought the Woody came from Woodson. And he sort of told me the Woody came from Woodson. And he did, in fact, descend from John Woodson. If you know Virginia, early Virginia families, there is John Woodson and he has two sons. He has John and he has Robert. And there is the story about the Tub Woodsons and the Potato Bin Woodsons. And that in... I think 1637, there was an Indian raid where Dr. John Woodson, and Dr. John Woodson was not a medical doctor, he was a scholar, a graduate of Cambridge or Oxford or something, none of it's in here anymore. It probably is, but I'd have to think about it a bit. But anyway, he was a scholar, not a physician, but he was known as Dr. John Woodson to somebody. Anyway, he's killed in this Indian raid, and his wife, Sarah, and a man by the name of John Larrabee hold them off, hold the Indians off because they're in their house and they managed to do that. And the weapon that they use, the Woodson rifle, is actually in the Virginia Historical Society. And I've gotten this close to it uh, because the family eventually, I think actually it was the Venable family who actually donated the uh, weapon, which I, is probably some sort of musket. I don't think actually it's a rifle, but some sort of musket to, because it's too early for rifles, to the historical society. So I've gone and I've looked at it and, and, and I've told the story about John and Robert uh, on occasion, especially at, my grandfather said, if you ever met a Woodson, ask him what kind of Woodson they are. So I, in fact, met a, a Woody Woodson well, let me back up for just a minute. Um, the Woody in the line of, this line goes back to Woodson Parsons and Nancy Ann Mosby, who are also cousins. And they both descend from John Woodson five different ways in five generations. And they are listed in Adventures of Person Person as a fifth generation, and John, of course, in volume three is the first generation. You can track them all back. And what's interesting in there 
is there are a whole bunch of woody marriages in that five generations. So one really doesn't know whether Woodson comes from Woodson or whether it comes from Woody. Uh, the latest Woody, I think, was Susanna Woody, who married a Parsons. So th what makes the story even worse is that I also descend from Robert. So I descend from both of the male children of John Woodson. And there is this story about Tub Woodson and Potato Bin Woodson. Of course, there's no potato bins in Colonial Virginia in 1637, but that's a different story. But my grandfather told me to, whenever he met a Woodson, ask him what kind of Woodson they were. And the truth of the matter is the only Woodsonans that I ever saw growing up were African-American football players, because they had Woodson on the back of their jerseys. And we weren't close, because uh, they were on TV and I wasn't. And then I was in LaGrange, Georgia, and I met a guy by the name of Woody Woodson, and we were at a Burns Night Supper. I used to be president of the Council of Scottish Glens and Associations, so I was big on Burns Night Suppers years ago. Not so much anymore, although I do love haggis. Good haggis. Scottish haggis, not necessarily American haggis. That said, um, you're probably all disgusted that I really don't care because I like haggis. I met Woody Woodson, and I said, what kind of Woodson are you? And he looked me right in the eye, and he said, I'm a potato bin Woodson. What of it? And I went, so am I. So we sat down with our napkins, and, you know, he was able to Woodson, 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 11 generations, and I was able to Woodson, Mosby, blah, 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 Parsons, Roberts, all the way back. Um... 13 generations, uh, no, 12 generations. So we are 11th cousins. I was his 11th cousin once removed. And so we were able to establish how we were related. And I had so much fun doing that, that it just, it just every time I told the story, it made my day, and I told the story a lot. And I was dating somebody at the time, and she basically told me to shut up about the Woodsons because she was tired of hearing about it. And we eventually got married. If you know me, I've gotten married a lot. Um, and so we're setting up house after our marriage and we, I'm putting the nine generation chart up on the wall and her nine generation chart up on the wall and the large map of Virginia and on the wall and blah, blah, blah. And I noticed that she has a Mosby family in her ninth generation. And the woman who married John Woodson was Sarah Mosby, the daughter of Edward Mosby. So I went, you have Mosby's? She said, yes. They married Binford's. And I said, I have Mosby's. So I walk over to my file cabinet and I, because I have this meticulously filed system at that point in time, not today, I pull out my Mosby file and I say, you mean this Mosby who married John Binford? And she said, yes. And I said, well, dear, we're eighth cousins twice removed. Fortunately, I was married to her when I told her this and not before I, because I'm not sure she would have married me having seen that I was her cousin. But you can see that I love doing this kind of thing, is trying to figure out the relationships of people. And I'd love to do it before there was DNA. So the thing that I wanted to talk to you about today was a book, Ancestors of American Presidents. So this gives me the opportunity, or this over the years, not this edition, because this is a 2009 edition, but earlier editions, all by Gary Boyd Roberts, gave me the opportunity to compare myself to presidents and figure out which presidents I was related to. So I can tell you, although I can't tell you off the top of my head at this point, that I'm related to the Bushes, I'm related to FDR, I'm related to, my favorite is being related to John Adams because my, I have an ancestor who's Hannah Bass and that Hannah Bass was the, an Adams girl married that, I don't have that right. John Adams 
grandmother or mother was a Bass, and I descend from John Bass, and that and, and Adam's connection is there with the Basses. So, you know, I have John Adams for a cousin, and I think that's a good thing. Does it mean anything? No, but it was fun figuring it out. And that is a lot of what genealogy actually is, the fun part of figuring out. Because don't forget, as I told you the other day, we have all these jigsaw puzzles that are all mixed up together, and our job is to create the boxes and put the puzzles in the right boxes and bring them together and all that kind of stuff. And this is a way that you can do this. In that, these lines are in Ancestors of American Presidents are fairly well established because they have met with scrutiny over time. And that's what genealogists have to deal with probably more than anything else is scrutiny over time. You have to become very tough skinned. One of the things that you have to deal with as a genealogist is people saying, you're not right. You're incorrect. My information is correct. Which isn't really fun. You have to have thick skin. You have to take criticism all the time. But what you have that they may not have is that genealogical proof because you've been using the genealogical proof standard. Now, do I believe that they applied the genealogical proof standard to this book? I do not because it really didn't exist when this book started. But the genealogical proof standard exists now, and that's how I think. And if it wasn't so hot in the warehouse today, I would have started talking about the genealogical proof standard, but the truth of the matter, it was just too hot. And I really had to deal with this issue about how unhappy I appear. So if you had to have advice for me about how I can appear happier as I'm doing my life's work, the thing that I'm passionate about, then please let me do that. And the reason I'm always so serious is, is I'm afraid you won't believe me if I joke about it. Maybe that's it. I'm not sure. But people want me to be happier. You know what would make me happy, truly happy? More views, more subscribers, more notifications, more people showing up for just genealogy live on the second Wednesday of the month. And I don't know, lots of people buying books. I mean, because creating books is causing books to be created. Because I'm not a printer, I'm a publisher. I pay people to put ink on paper. But creating books is what I do, and I have to sell them in order to continue to do that. And you should know that as much as I love just genealogy, it's really just a mechanism for you to know about heritage books. That's why heritage books pays me to do just genealogy. I pay me to do just genealogy. Not enough money in the world. This is too much fun. Somebody once said to me, I mean, they paid me to play soccer today, Dad. And I went, now you know what converting an avocation or your hobby into your life's work could be like. You're being, you've complained about genealogy all this time and how it's not real work because it's too much fun or it's like a hobby. And yet you tell me that because you got paid to play soccer, which I still don't understand how I got paid to play soccer. You got paid to play, play soccer. You thought that was a great thing, yet you complained about me doing genealogy? Trust me, genealogy is a great thing. I would do it for free. But I have to put a roof over your head. Anyway, what more can I say? Heritage Books has this book, Ancestors of American Presidents. It goes from Washington to Obama. I haven't heard about when one will come out that includes our former president or our current president, but there they are, all there. And you too can connect to a US president. I have some sense that that might be able to occur if you gave it some thought. So this is Craig, this has been Just Genealogy, and it's, oh, I need to smile now, or something like that. I just haven't really got it figured out yet. I've, look, I promise, my friends who know me know that I promise them three things. I promise them honesty, intellect, and the opportunity to laugh. If I'm not providing you the opportunity to laugh, I'm failing you, 
So I need to work on that. And I promise you that I will work on continuing to provide you with honesty, continuing to provide you with intellect, and continuing, at least, or starting to continue, to provide you with the opportunity to laugh. Maybe I just don't know how to do that when it comes to genealogy, although probably I do. I will work on it. So I will see you all tomorrow.